Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm sitting here behind two AMS units, but one of these AMS is not like the other. Here we have the all new AMS 2 Pro. Today, we are going to have a look at the many updates to the new AMS 2 Pro. Before we do that, let's have a quick chat about some of the features of the new AMS 2 Pro. First being the name. Let's be real. This is an AMS Pro, not an AMS 2, not an AMS 2 Pro. There's only one new AMS that makes this either the 2 or the Pro, not the 2 Pro, because there's no 2. So how can this be a Pro of the 2 if there's no 2? Also, it's not an entirely new unit. As you can see, to the naked eye, it almost looks the same. That makes this an updated, more advanced version of this. One can argue that makes it a 2, like a PlayStation 2, a Nintendo Switch 2. However, when one makes more of an iterative update, a more powerful, more advanced version of a current project, it usually doesn't get a new number. For example, the Xbox One S or the Xbox One X, the PS4 Pro, the PS5 Pro, the AMS Pro. If you ask me, cutting the two and sticking with the Pro would have given a more clear picture of what this new product is. I'm not sure we need a number in any of our AMS namings, especially when we're going to have racks with multiple AMS and refer to them as AMS 1, AMS 2, AMS 3, and suddenly we have machines known as AMS 1, AMS 2. I foresee scenarios where communication can get confusing. So anyway, Bamboo has chosen AMS2 Pro, and henceforth, we will refer to it as whatever we want. Maybe I'll call it AMS2, maybe I'll call it AMS Pro, maybe I'll call it AMS2 Pro, maybe I'll accidentally call it the CFS. Who knows, and who cares? All that out of the way, the AMS2 Pro is a really nice unit full of quality of life updates that the AMS badly needed. I'm really happy it exists and I commend Bamboo for not reinventing the wheel, but instead updating our beloved AMS to give it all these things we desperately need to make our lives easier. Let's get a few questions out of the way. Yes, the AMS 2 is compatible with all Bamboo Lab printers. If you are installing it on an X1 or P1 or A1 series, you will need an upgrade kit. There are multiple upgrade kits available. One comes with a simple buffer, one comes with the hub. The buffer allows for one AMS. The hub allows for more than one. The original AMS on the P1, A1, X1 gives you up to 16 colors with four AMS. The AMS2 on the new Bamboo Lab H2D allows for four AMS2 for 16 colors, or on the H2D, for AMS2 plus 8 AMS HT for a total of a whopping 24 colors. On older machines such as the X1 or P1, the AMS2 will allow up to 4 AMS HT for a total of 20 colors. The AMS1 doesn't offer heating or drying. The AMS2 finally brings us drying through heating and air venting. The AMS2 can actually rotate your filament during the heating process and uses RFID tags to automatically set the drying to match the filament you are using. Keep in mind, currently that RFID tag reading relates to Bamboo Lab official filaments. However, you can set that drying to match whatever filament you are using. The AMS2 also has a new port on the back, and that port accepts an AC adapter. This AC adapter is for that heating. If you are not using the heating on the AMS2, you can go ahead and use it without the AC adapter. If you have no plans of using the heating, you can actually order the AMS2 without the AC adapter to save some cost. That might sound silly to you, but if you're buying two or three or four, that savings could add up. Each AMS2 that is using the heating will require an AC adapter. If you have four AMS2 
and you are going to use the heating on all four AMS2. All four need an AC adapter. If you are running an H2D, the H2D can power one AMS2 Pro for heating. If you have multiple AMS2 Pro, you can power any one of those at any given time for heating. However, if you want to power more than one, you will need an AC adapter. Another feature I've already heard people talking about online from their own experience is the faster, more powerful motors inside the AMS2 Pro. Bamboo claims that these motors provide feeding and retracting 60% faster than the original AMS. And according to them, per 100 swaps, you will save 10 minutes. I'm not terribly impressed with that number and I don't feel like it's a deciding factor in deciding to upgrade, but if you regularly do prints with two or 300 swaps and you're saving 10 minutes per 100 swaps, in a 14 hour print, you saved a whopping 30 minutes. I don't know, great, I guess. So in short, we've got drying, faster feeding, easier maintenance, and on the H2D, eight additional colors. That's the short of the new AMS2 Pro. And those three things are nothing to laugh at other than the 10 minutes per 100 swaps. Anyway, moving along, let's have a look at some of the quality of life updates. And this, in my opinion, is where the AMS2 Pro shines. Let's start with a big one, the funnels. Some of you may yet to have encountered this problem while others who have know where I'm going. You are looking at a major design issue on the original AMS. These funnels are plastic. Over time, your filament will wear a notch or a groove into this plastic funnel. This groove causes drag on the filament leading to motor overload errors on your AMS. You would think you simply pop this funnel off and press a new one into place. But oh no, that is not the case. You either replace this entire feeder or you have to disassemble this entire feeder to replace an assembly that includes this funnel. This was a huge misstep in the design of this funnel. The AMS2 now has all new ceramic funnels. These funnels will not be wearing out anytime soon. This alone is a huge stress relief and one thing you don't have to worry about, especially if doing multi-day or hour prints where that groove could form and tank your project, leading you to also tank your time performing surgery to replace it. The existence of this new ceramic funnel is strong evidence Bamboo has been paying attention. However, this funnel is still not removable without surgery. Staying with the funnel and quality of life updates, have a look right here at the new thumb button. You see how flat it is, allowing you to press forward more easily. That is the direction you are supposed to press to relieve pressure on the gearing and that filament. The original AMS has this thumb breaking little nub that is faced at an angle and really hard to get any movement going. Let's be honest, nobody uses it. Everybody just pulls their filament out. I'm not saying we're gonna do the same thing on the new AMS, but I'm saying we're gonna do the same thing on the new AMS. Regardless, kudos to Bamboo, this new button is endlessly better, even though we're still not gonna use it. At the bottom of the OG AMS is this compartment. This compartment contains this crappy disc impact that nobody's using. Most people have modded this compartment to add a different type of filament container that holds more desiccant. Sliding over to the AMS2, we now have vents where that desiccant compartment used to be. But bamboo, what about the desiccant? No worries, they made the compartment in the back wider so you can now stick desiccant 
in its rear end. People are no doubt going to mod the crud out of this thing for desiccant upgrades. And I'm sad to say our beloved desiccant holders no longer fit in the new AMS. So we will have to have smart people design and print new ones. The good news is there does appear plenty of space to do that. And for simple folk like me that don't care about looks and only care about function, there's plenty of room to just drop a desk and pack in between those feeders, which is what I do. Here we are back on the OG AMS. If you should have filament break off in the AMS hub and be stuck inside the gearing or the Bowden tube, you have to remove screws, lift this entire unit out, remove two very, very tiny connectors that are behind here, disconnect the Bowden tube by reaching down here, squeezing this awkward little two-faced button, pulling out the tube in the back, then finally gaining access to the Bowden tubes, which are bizarrely hidden underneath the AMS. I'd like to point out, you might notice, I do in fact right now have filament broken off inside that Bowden tube. This is an incredible nuisance that can really stress you out if you are somebody with a print farm running six, eight, 10, 12, or even more AMS. And at any given time, a brittle filament could snap off and cause you to have to remove the AMS and disassemble everything in the middle of your workday in order to get it going again. God forbid you put it all back together and it happens again. Enter the AMS2. Bamboo has created a toolless access to these Bowden tubes. Should you have a break off leaving filament stuck inside these Bowden tubes, you now have access to the hub and the Bowden tubes without any tools and without disassembling the entire AMS. Disassembling the entire AMS presents legitimate opportunity to break it. This feature here is an absolute game changer for people running several AMS for long hours all the time. Speaking of rear end, let's say you need to remove the Bowden tube from your AMS. The Bowden tube release button is back here. To remove the Bowden tube, you have to reach in with the lid open, squeeze this button that's a nightmare to press, uh, reach behind and then maybe get the Bowden tube out. Here on the AMS2, you might remember this compartment has been repurposed and widened in order to accept desiccant. A somewhat silly yet brilliant use of this suddenly available space. Why is this space suddenly available? because the release button on the AMS2 Pro is right here, allowing you to easily remove the tube at any time. Should you need to move the AMS for service or yank on some filament, this makes that process a lot easier to disconnect the AMS from the printer. While we are here, let's look at the bottom of the AMS2. Here is your air vent. This helps the heating and drying work more efficiently by drawing the moisture out of the case. This is a magnetically controlled device that opens and closes as needed to vent. Here is what the heating system looks like. Heating units in slot one, two, three, and four. Venting units in slot one and four. And there's a basic rundown of the new improvements to the AMS2 Pro. There are lots of little minor details and I may have missed a few things. Whether or not the AMS2 Pro is worth the upgrade to you is of course up to you. However, all of these little minor quality of life updates do add up 
to a total package that certainly, in my opinion, validates its existence. We will take a closer look at servicing the AMS2 Pro in the near future. I'm Mr. Greg, and you're on 3D Rundown.